Hello again, everybody. So let's get started. So we're going to begin with a bit of an introduction. And I'm just going to be introducing a lot of things involving the framework for which we're going to discuss things ranging from problems to data structures and algorithms. And this should ease us into the course material. And then after, once we get through the brunt of that, we'll start playing around some data structures, or at least problems involving data structures, which is, you'll find that this course, they tend to go all together in this big pot. So a major aspect of computer science is really just the study and solving of com computational problems. So very often, uh, this will come in kind of two pieces. So to design a solution for many types of problems, often there's kind of two parts. Is how you're going to organize the data that we, for which you're managing over. So a data structure more broadly, like this is the broad use of this term, is a systematic way of organizing and accessing slash modifying data. So like I said, it's really broad. Like some people will just stick to this kind of definition to keep it broad. I'll give you a working definition that we're going to use in this class, but be warned, some will use a broader definition like this. But probably the one part of this course you're going to find that we're going to spend a lot of time on is the second one here, is how to solve a problem. So this is algorithm. So this is really where a lot of this course is going to go in tandem with data structures. So it's a step-by-step -step procedure for performing a, some task in finite time. So I'll try to hopefully convince you before the end of today that these things kind of go together. So anyways, just the big thing I want you to take from this is that both one and two will go hand in hand. They, they're, they're married at the hip very often when we try to study lots of problems. So for oftentimes an algorithm will depend on a certain choice of a data structure and oftentimes it will lead to different outcomes for which you analyze the efficiency of the algorithms. Likewise, if I give you a data structure, the operations that dictate how the data structure works depend on algorithms. So oftentimes you want to look for efficient algorithms to achieve certain things that the data structures wanted to do. As if the data structure actually had some sort of agency to it. Okay, so let's start talking about some definitions. So I'm going to lay out some definitions just because it's a good idea we start working with something. You're going to find that everything's going to kind of come together with the things you may have seen in a course like in first year. You're going to find I'm going to take a little bit more of an abstract way of approaching these things because in computer science, it's not really about programming, it's about the ideas. And this kind of mathematical way of thinking about computation. So I'm going to start off, and you're going to find that this definition is going to be fairly broad because it is, is the definition of a data type. You, you've encountered data types before. You've encountered things like primitive types, like integers, characters, things like that. But you also encounter more complex data types like arrays. Um, you may have encountered things like objects, uh, things that are built off of classes. So a data type. So a data type is just a collection, a collection of values of values or objects or objects that that can be mathematically specified like I said if you clearly define it in a mathematical way mathematically specified specified or given concretely, meaning that this is something that you'll eventually actually have on a computer. Keep in mind that this, this is actually quite a blurred line. You'll find that as we go on in the course that this line will be very blurred. And the more you proceed in computer science, the more this line will pretty much kind of blur. This is just really just the mean very specifically like you actually went out and actually implemented the computer program. Given concretely, in, in a programming language, in a programming language. So things like mathematically specified, you might think of like real numbers, um, like rational numbers, models of something 
that you actually want to use versus in a programming language, you think like int, char, you're on the primitive type, bool or boolean. The point is, is that this is a really broad definition. It captures all sorts of things. But the key thing I want you to know is it's a collection of values or objects. Hopefully that is clear. Now, when it comes to data types, I oftentimes want to have some way of specifying the data type with some set of operations. So I want to say what the data type is. So I want some mathematical model or some way of thinking about how I want to organize the data. But I also want to have some sort of operations. This is going to come back to an idea you may have seen in a previous course called an abstract data type. You may have even seen that idea more directly. I'm going to, uh, going to say, going to say, oftentimes, whoops, often, oftentimes, oftentimes, we would like, we would like a mathematical, a mathematical abstraction, abstraction slash model, so abstraction or model of a data type plus operations and supports. This is referred to referred to as an abstract data type. Abstract data type. So I'm going to give you the definition that I'm going to use of an abstract data type. So I'll just write the definition down and then I'm going to go through an example just to explain the idea. At first, this, this definition looks like a mouthful. It, it is very much like when you look at it, like, what the heck does that mean? That's basically what you're going to get out of this thing. Uh, unless you know a lot more about this than, than some others. Uh, so I'm going to say a collection of values, objects. Now you might remember this is just the definition of a data type. That's just the definition of a data type. And, and a set of operations, a set of operations on those values or objects. So, so far I've added a little bit here that I've kind of described up there. Now this is the part that gets a little bit strange if you're not familiar with this term. Uh, that is accessed, accessed only, so it's accessed only through an interface. Now you might ask, Dan, what the heck is an interface? Um, an interface. Interface defines its supported operations. There's our definition of an abstract data type. So there's kind of three things going on here. We have the, the set, this, this the idea of a data type. And we have a set of operations. So these are the operations I want to perform involving this, this data type. That is accessed only through an interface. So I want to explain what exactly, what do I mean by that? 
So the interface always just defines the operations. It, the, the big point I want to say is that this only defines them. It doesn't actually tell you how they're performed. It just tells you what they are. So let me just write a few things down about that. And we're going to do, do, do an example with the stack. Right? I think stacks are pretty good. Okay. So I'm just going to write that in what I, I just said. And ABT, by the way, just in case, I should write down ABT over here. That's the acronym. ABT. And ABT describes the types, the type, I don't want to say the type of data, the data store. Store and the operations performed on them. But, this is a big but, but not how it does it. Now, the great thing is that, that so you can think of this as, a, so the abstract part of ADT is just me saying, hey, look, this is going to tell me what the, what's going on with the data and the operations. So the big part is that it's the, uh, the interface aspect of this is going to specify the operations, so it defines them. So it's worth noting that in programming languages, uh, you actually do have natural ways of capturing this. You've probably seen at least one way. Uh, for example, uh, classes. Uh, for example, in C++, you may have seen it with classes. Um, I'll also, I will note that in Java, for example, uh, it has interfaces. So that's an example of an explicit feature in this programming language that looks just like our definition. So, and for example, in Java, you can create an interface it, where you can define the parameters for which the ADT is specified, so all of its operations, but you'll never be able to say that your object or your class truly implements uh, this data type unless it, it implements all of its operations. So in the notes, I do give a link if you're curious more about ADT, uh, ADTs. You'll be probably doing something like that on the assignment. So you can, of course, you can of course define ADTs. For all sorts of, of objects, such as, and this is probably how you encountered some of these, maybe, such as stacks. If not, if you ever encounter a stack, I'm going to talk about stacks in a moment. Stacks, queues, trees. Later on, we'll talk about in this course, trees and graphs. Uh, you've probably seen lists before. So you've probably have encountered some of these in the past. So to elaborate on this concept, I'm going to consider the concept of a stack. Now I'm just going to write down what a stack is in terms of ADT language. And then we'll see how this works and why an interface like this, this notion makes sense. Okay, so, so I'm going to define what a stack is. Okay, let's keep going here. So a stack is a collection, a collection of objects that follow 
follow, last in, first out, uh, which is LIFO, if you're curious about the acronym for that, LIFO. This is in contrast to FIFO. I'll let you think about what FIFO is, if you haven't seen it before. Uh, rules for insertion, insertion and removal, removal of objects from the collection. That's the idea of a stack. Now, more formally, more formally, so this is where I'm going to get somewhat more, more abstract away, more to this concept of an ADP. More formally, a stack, a stack is an ADT, is an ADT that supports the following two operations. The following Now keep in mind, your ADT, you can define more operations if you'd like. I'm just going to have these two, but I'm also going to list the other ones that it might also support. So the first one is, of course, push. Or I push an element, so it adds an element, an element E to the top of the stack. So the way what you want to think about push is now remember I want to talk about things in abstract ways, not in terms of programming. That's the big thing I want you to think about here. So imagine I have these four stacks of plates. Sorry, four plates, not four stacks. Although technically you could think of these as four separate stacks if you really wanted to. So imagine I have a stack with no plates. If the idea of push is that it is going to add an element to the top of the stack. Now there's nothing on the stack right now, so I'm just gonna put my plate here. So right now my stack consists of this single yellow plate. So if I perform another push operation, it should follow the LIFO rules, so it's going to go on top of the stack. So now I have a green plate on top of my stack, so now I have two plates. Likewise, if I put on the blue one, now I have three plates. So I pushed three elements onto the stack using the push operation. So now notice that I've not told you what push actually is doing. It's not saying how, it's saying what. So that's the big thing I want you to observe. So if I know what a stack AD, the stack's ADT specifies, I should be able to pick up the stack and use it, assuming it's all working correctly, without needing to actually like say, "Hey, look, what exactly does it look like inside?" It's, remember, this is that's the point. This is the big idea: is the, the abstraction away from the implementation, so that you can pick different choices for implementations. That brings you to the second operation that I'm going to talk about: pop. So pop has no parameters. So pop, very simple. Now I'm going to do it this way. You don't have. It doesn't have to be this way, but this is how I'm going to define my ADT here. So removes and returns returns the top the top element from the stack. From the stack. Or null or nil. You'll find I'll very often use null and nil as synonyms. Uh, you're probably familiar with the concept of null from previous course. In my diagrams, I'll usually use nil, but when we see nil, just think null. Okay. Or null if the stack is empty, meaning there's no plates anymore, or 
It could be whatever, whatever the element is. Okay. So note that the stack also supports the following operations as well. You may, may be familiar with some of these. It also supports talk. So you might know this is peak, possibly. Uh, size, which is the number of elements in the stack or my collection. Or is empty. Is empty will tell you true if the stack is empty, false if it is not. So the big things I want you to take away from this is notice, notice each operation, each operation, each operation as specified, uh, specified describes describes arguments or parameters, whatever word you prefer to use. So for example, my push over the tells me what the argument is. It's an element, E. Or the pop has no arguments, so it doesn't take anything in as input. Um, it accepts and the value it returns, it called its return value, its return value, if any. Okay. So, that brings me to just talking a little bit more abstractly about this, is so I have my plates here. So remember, I just have my operations. I have push and I have pop over here. So I can push. So right now I have three plates on here. If I pop, I get the blue plate. If I pop the green one, I get the green plate. Now remember when I say the, I'm talking about the top element, right? If I have currently this, I can push the pink plate onto the yellow plate. So now that's the top of the stack. I can check how many plates there are, right? The size. I have two plates. Notice there's nothing about computer programs here at all. It's very, it's very much about the modeling of the data. And there's operations. By the way, if I if I pop this once and I pop that, what happens when I pop this? Nothing, right? It, well, it should return null. <laughs> null or nil. So it isn't nothing, it should return no, right? So just keep that in mind. So that brings me to my next point. So notice that I talked about this all being specified. Now, naturally you think of a stack not less room being a bunch of plates, you might think of something more that looks like this, right? This is sort of the picture you have in your head. If I have four elements, Imagine these are my four plates, and this is the stack, and this is the top of the stack. Naturally, you want to ask, okay, well, how do I actually get the stack? Well, you have to implement all of its operations, right? That's what we said. That brings me to my working definition of a data structure. And well, I think we'll stop there once we get past that. And then we'll go to an example of what I mean next class. Okay, I'll quickly give you the definition. So here's the definition. So this is just something for you to think about. By the way, how, how exactly was that stack created? Well, I could push D on, then I push C, then I push B, then I push A, right? 
So that's a data structure. So this is our working definition that we're going to use. Keep in mind, remember I said it's pretty broad of a term. Uh, so it is a, this is going to look very similar to another one I showed you, a collection of values or objects. Remember, this is just the definition of a data type. Of a data type and a set of operations. Set of operations on those those values or objects. If you want to substitute those. More formally, it doesn't make much of a difference, i.e., a concrete representation of an ADT, its implementation. big thing here is just that what I'm going to define the data structure in our class is just that it's going to be a basically the data type with those operations but it is the implementation of an ADT. So when we talk about the stack, which we'll do next day, I'll remind you of one possible implementation of a data structure and try to tie this together with the notion of a problem. So I'll stop here for now and thank you so much for watching and have yourself a beautiful day.